I can't stop it. Oh, God. Can't stop the KubaCast. We're going. We can't stop technology. Technology yeah. will stop us. It marches forward. And that was our intro for KubaCast number 66. Hi, everyone. I'm your host this time around, Matt Paxton, the multimedia manager here at PNM and PureNintendo.com, your independent source for all things Nintendo. I am joined by three extra people today. I am joined by Justin Sharp. Hey, everyone. I am joined by Tristan Myman. And I'm joined by Trist, uh, Alex Stramke. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? <laughs> so enthused. And we're so enthused today because we were talking about our uh, the various DLC that Nintendo has put out over the year. Um, before we continue on with the statement, I'm going to go ahead and remind anybody who is watching that we do check for reader questions that we answer at the end of our site, each KubaCast. So if you have a question, please leave a comment in our Pure Nintendo story at purenintendo.com. Or you can always tweet the Twitter account Pure Nintendo, or at Pure Nintendo, using the hashtag KubaCast. Now, with that out of the way, yes, we are talking about uh, Nintendo's DLC. Um, there's been many DLC stories uh, as of late. Mario Kart DLC, the latest Mario Kart DLC, uh, came out last week. Um, it came with the free 200cc account or 200cc mode, uh, which is you know even faster, uh, you know carts I guess. Um, and it also came out with the um, Animal Crossing pack, which included Isabella, Dry Bowser, and the male and female villager. It also came with two cups. And um, that was actually, did I say second pack? Because I'm at third, because we can't forget the uh, Mercedes pack that came out the first the first time around. Oh, of course. That was a shameless yeah. plug of advertisement. Yeah. Yes. So totally forgot about that. I never use those. I never <laughs> use those cards. Yeah. If you want to call them that. I, w I would be happy to talk with Mercedes if they would like uh, a sponsorship deal with Pure Nintendo, of course. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, then sure. Everyone go drive a Mercedes because all of our readers can totally afford Mercedes. Is, is, is. Listen, as long as we disclose that we have a deal with Mercedes, then, you know, we could talk up Mercedes. Well, we'll talk see Mercedes, we can do that. Come on, guys. I'm more of a Volvo kind of person myself, but... <laughs> well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a Volvo deal. Um... So the first the Mercedes pack came out. That was one of the first DLC packs. After that was the Legend of Zelda pack, which, of course, introduced Link. Um, and, of course, two new cups into that. And then finally Animal Crossing. And that's, that's like, a good example of Nintendo's, like, continuous support. And they kind of, like, they've already have it all kind of planned out. And they're going to release it over the course of the year. Uh, mm. So that's their that was their continuous support. They also did that with Hyrule Warriors, where they had four packs. They had like the Majora's Mask pack, the Twilight Princess pack, um, and the Boss pack. Those are your favorite. Oh yes. Well, I haven't tried the Boss pack yet, just yet. Uh, but I would love to. But um, so I guess we'll just start with kind of like that year-round uh, DLC completion. Like I wanted to say, like, is this like specifically the uh, direction you kind of want to see Nintendo going with uh, their DLC? Um, I would. I'll, I'm always up for DLC if it warrants its purchase, and I feel like something like a new character in Smash or a new new you know racetracks and racers and, and uh, Mario Kart. I think that's definitely something that's worth going out of your way to pick up, rather than oh here's a new skin for your character. To me, something like that, like a small cosmetic thing. That's not going to add any more to your gameplay other than like, ooh, look at that, that looks neat, but a, a whole new track to explore, things like that, that's something that does warrant a purchase. And even though Nintendo does throw in their subtle hints about potential future releases, because, I mean, when you look at Mario Kart, there are two F-Zero tracks, I'm just saying. <laughs> Nintendo is very sneaky like that. Yeah. I think they're, they're doing an awesome job with, with DLC. I think that's that's one area. I think most anyone can agree on, you know, even people, you know, who follow Nintendo more closely or even people who are Xbox, you know, PlayStation or PC gamers, I think they can see just in contrast to what a lot of other companies do versus what Nintendo does with DLC. I think a lot of people would agree that Nintendo gives you a lot of bang for your buck uh, with, with the DLC they've released so far. 
And I like what Sakurai uh, mentioned. He said, the DLC that they've done is true DLC. It's after, after the game has been finished and they've continued work and developed this extra content. It's not... It's not DLC to fix a broken game, you know, uh, yeah. to fix a game yeah. that, you know, because I feel like, you know, PC gamers and, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, you know, there's a lot of third parties, you know, Ubisoft is a, a big offender, and, you know, there's several that have, you know, had their fair share of problems when they first come out at launch, and they're like, oh, here, if you have, like, the fourth patch, the, the game's great, you know. Um, well, yeah, dude. I was actually remember I was chatting with some other friends about something like that. Like it's on a side note thing, but about like patches. I feel like some game developers rely on that system way too much to fix a game. They're like, oh, well, the game has all these flaws, but don't worry, it'll last them about a week until we can put the patch out. When you know, I've noticed with, um, you know, definitely praising Nintendo on this. I don't think I've ever played one of their games where it was simply, oh. Now we have to wait for a patch to come out or something like that. I think the only time I experienced that maybe was when Nintendo Land first came out, but that was you know fixed immediately. And since then, there have been no issues. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. That was like a little, little like side tangent did, about patches. Did, now, did anybody uh, uh, like purchase any of the season passes, whether it was the Mario Kart DLC pass or the uh, Hyrule Warriors DLC pass? I purchased uh, both of those. Um, Mm -hmm. I was pretty happy with it because it's a one-time, like purchase. If you think with the the Mario Kart season pass, I think it was like what, like twenty bucks. So you're no, paying no. about no, like bucks. $4 ninety-nine. I think. Yeah, they had, a like, too. they had a discount if you did the season pass. It was I think three three dollars, three four dollars off, and it actually was a good discount when you compare uh, like oh, okay. here's how much they both cost if I got them separately. That tells me how long it's been since I paid yeah. for it. It's completely out the door. Um, yeah. But, like, that's a great deal, and you get, like, a ton of extra content that breathes new life into this game. So just when you're getting, you know, burnt out on it, it's like, oh, now you got a reason to put it back in. So you check out these new tracks and race more people online with new characters, see how they control, you know. It does its job. It's not, oh, download this, um, and we'll give you an extra level so you can level up your characters that should already be in the game. It'll make it easier to play through. Yeah. Like, that's one of my biggest qualms with, like, RPGs, when they have you have DLC that'll give you, like, an extra battle. It'll make the game easier for you because it'll give you more experience or money. Mm-hmm. That's, like, no. That's, that's not that's how it should be. Cool. That's not cool, man. I, I also like how Nintendo, specifically with Mario Kart 8, uh, where they've, they've basically said, hey, here's some paid downloadable content. But they're not leaving, you know, the people who don't want to pay, you know, the people that or can't pay. You know, maybe there's some kid out there that, you know, he has Mario Kart and his parents are like, oh, you know, we can't get to the DLC packs right now. But he got the free update for the 200cc. And now, I mean, he can replay all of those cups on 200cc. And, I mean, he'll be playing for hours and hours trying to beat those cups, you know, those Grand Prix now. Yeah. So I, I think that's really cool. Nintendo's been able to pick, pick and choose certain things where like, oh, that should be free. That should just be a free update. And oh, this, yeah, we'll just make that an, an optional, you know, paid uh, DLC. I think they've done a, uh, a nice job of offering that. So. Yeah, you, def you definitely brought up a good point there, uh, Justin, about that they're picking and choosing what's DL or what's going to be paid DLC and what's going to be free content. The 200cc and the Mercedes, I believe those were both free. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. But then you're getting if you want to get two cups or two new like you know racing cups, then you need to you know you know fork over the dough there. And that makes sense. That that to me that makes mm -hmm. sense. It's something that's worth that's worth paying for or something. Yeah. Like that. So I'm I'm willing to go. Yeah. Here's you know ten dollars for these extra tracks. That's something absolutely you know it, it makes and it's absolutely to me it's worth it. Um, it's worth, you know, forking that cash over. And I would say probably the most impressive DLC that Nintendo released, though, um, and what blew me away of how much, uh, how I felt, you know, satisfied with my payment was uh, Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> I didn't think after I beat that game I was really going to find a lot of use in the DLC, but after I picked up um, the, uh, the first one was the Master Quest pack, I think. Yeah. Yeah, after reading Matt's review on it, I was like, all right, I'll fork over the money for it, and I did, and I was thinking, wow, I'm actually finding a lot of replayability into this. This gives me more reason to pop this into my Wii U and, and revisit it and, you know, actually level up my characters and grow, 
And yeah, like Alex said, it wasn't like, oh, here's some battles to level yourself up. It was, you know, that was there, but you, you got these all these other game variants in order to choose from. And then before I knew it, um, the other packs, like the Twilight pack came out and had a blast with that. Same with the Majora's one, which I'm still like, catching myself. Actually, I, I need to pop that back in and go back and revisit it. And it's also great with that. You know, you also get other characters to play as who are not simple flat swaps. It's more of, oh, each of them have their own unique abilities to themselves. I even found Tingle useful. There, Alex, I said it. You happy? Yes, very. So I have Tingle here somewhere. I think he's hiding me on the PC. <laughs> And uh, another, another game that they did a free update recently was uh, Smash Brothers, because they added at least on the Wii U version <laughs> they just had a free update that uh, I think it added like twelve new levels that have eight player capability now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so so again, I, I would kind of equate that to the two hundred CC in the sense that they basically you know it's still the same content but they've given you you know a little bit extra on top. Well, exactly. I like that philosophy. Is they're giving you the stuff for free that probably doesn't take a lot of like work or effort to put in a few extra lines of code to make that work. You yeah. know, because most of the grunt work is done for that already. Yeah. But the stuff that does take time, like modeling the new characters and programming them, implementing them. I don't mind paying for that because yeah. it's a brand new experience and there was manpower to went into that. Yeah. So I don't feel like I'm being nickel and dimed to death. Um, so, and yes. um, the biggest the biggest risk that Nintendo was taking with this this season pass model is of course that it's a season pass, and um, though Nintendo's you know uh, just starting out trying these you know these new DLC methods, we've de we've have you know been burned by season passes before where we kind of look at it and we're like I don't know if it's gonna be worth that money. Do I really want to sink twenty dollars into something that could just be you know, an extra character, or you know, something Alex said, where it's an extra quest to make your characters a little bit stronger. And, you know, it's you know, super cheap, not worth your time. So it's definitely, I mean, even if it's Nintendo, who's a quality software developer, uh, it's still kind of an, like a risk to say, you know, please, please have faith in us while we stretch out, you know, different aspects of DLC over the course of a year. You know, so, you know, give us your $20 or $25, and we promise you're still going to have good content for this game a year from now. You know, so that's still, like, an awful risk, I think. Yeah, it is. You're, 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 you are investing a lot of faith into that company. Um, I guess, you know, since I've been such a fan of Nintendo, they've never really steered me wrong before. Virtual Boy side. Um, a lot safer than, like, a Kickstarter or, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but sometimes, if I can, because, you know, when you go to a store and you pick up a game, they'll ask you right then and there if you want this season pass. The good thing is, though, is you have the option later on, usually now in-game, to purchase it. Mm -hmm. Depending on the title, um, I'll always wait, because I want to play the game first and go, wow, did, you know, did I have a good time with this? And if I did, and I, really, and I would, you know, thoroughly, you know, pick it up and, and play it again in fresh file, then, yeah, I'm, chances are I'm probably going to go out and pick, it up, pick up that season pass, but... I need to at least test out the waters first to find, is this a game that I'm really going to catch myself re re revisiting a lot? And something like Mario Kart, even if I'm not playing it, you know, if I'm playing it by myself, then I might have a bunch of friends over who want to, you know, play the new tracks or something. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, just going to keep moving on to the next uh, bit of DLC. We kind of hinted at it here or there, and it's just kind of like... Um, it. Actually, uh, sorry, I was just moving stuff around there. <laughs> Amateur hour over here with me. Um, I did want to bring up um, what Alex talked about earlier. I was thinking about segueing, but I didn't want to cut everybody off uh, talking about the season pass thing, where you were talking about, Alex, about characters like, you know, you get here, buy this DLC, and now it's easier for you to level up, and you can get more characters, and, you know, whatever, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Bad news for you if you're a fan of Xenoblade, Chronic or Xenoblade Chronicles because uh, yeah. Modelist Soft just announced uh, DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is, you know, just exactly what you described. Yeah, that's what I was hoping at. <laughs> so, you know, I hope you oh, I hope that wasn't face shattering there. Do they release that it's just going to be characters, that's it? Um, it's characters, and characters will have their own, like, class. specific, yeah, specific class, like, 
you know, you'll get, if you uh, complete this character's series of quests, you get, you know, you can recruit him as a character. If you get this character's quest, you get this one. There's like four characters and there's four packs. So it's like the character of the quests. You can also get their scales or dolls or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that's in there. And then some extra weapons as well. And what I'm saying is, there's still a hope for a hero pun in this game. Yeah. No. That's what I'm hearing. They're all human, sorry. They're all human. No, I'm pretty sure there's gonna, there, there should be a knop on in there. There's going to be, uh, there's gonna be Ricky DLC. Yeah, oh, yeah, Ricky just comes back and just wins the day. Yeah. Or a Ricky doll. That would be amazing. Yeah. There is a Ricky doll, but I think it's Japan only. So oh, I'm God. That. That'd be a little Ricky blush. That'd be awesome. The, the pricing didn't look too bad. It said 500 yen. Yeah, 500 yen for each pack. Which and is like five bucks. Packs. It's about, yeah, a little under five bucks for if you're converting. Yeah. But then there were some packs that were 300 yen. Right, so those I mean, are quest-specific packs, and they can earn you different right. benefits, such as, like, Miranium, or money, or blueprints, or weapons, or union points, which I haven't had the full grasp of union points yet, so I couldn't tell you. I can elaborate on that. And so the whole thing was 2,000 yen. Mm, yeah. You which is <laughs> not that much. That's, that's like, $16.8, according to current uh, values. But usually things are inflated a little bit higher in Japan, so like the the direct conversion isn't a good metric. I mean, so if it's sixteen point eight you know uh, dollars in America, it's mm -hmm. probably going to be like fourteen ninety nine or something. Same okay. same thing with like four dollars and twenty cent in America. It'll probably be like two ninety nine or three ninety nine. You know, it'll it'll be <laughs> a little bit down from what the direct uh, conversion is. I feel like I got an economics lesson there. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. well, least, that, that's just from a cursory, like, uh, I, I do a lot of, like, just checking on what import prices are for games and Japanese systems. Because every now and then I'm like, hey, you know, maybe I, maybe I want to, you know, import this or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, maybe I will import all of the Amiibos from Japan. Yeah, so I kept up with the prices, and for the most part, the direct <laughs> translation doesn't always, it's usually just a little bit less than that. When it moves the state side. Let me ask you, Justin. Um, how close were you about thinking about picking up a uh, Japanese Wii U so you could import Xenoblade Chronicles X already? Oh, I was close. I was close. They they even have they even have a Xenoblade bundle. I think uh, they do have a Xenoblade bundle. Uh, I saw pictures of that. It's not get, right there, man. Get oh, a booklet don't... and everything. What's, yeah. it, what's it look like? Is it like uh, is it a, a, a different colored Wii U? Is it like red or something like that? Or? No, no, it's a black Wii U. It's just a black Wii U, but the the box looks cool. <laughs> yeah, what you want is the art book and all the other stuff. No, I would totally, totally pay for the art book. Maybe in the future, Dark Horse or whatever will like invest in it and try to make an English translation of it. Yeah. I think I love collecting art books now for games. Yeah, I'm sure they'll do something. Yeah. All right. And uh, I'm just going to bring us back to task real quick here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How is this not task? Um, because we're talking about Xenoblade X again. I think we've done that enough in the past month. <laughs> you, you, still, you feel like you're making this sound like it's a bad thing, bud. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, yeah. Like, no, I would say like cake, but there's never a bad time for cake. Yeah. All right. Um, and another thing I wanted to mention about the D DLC launch was not only is it you know, is it 500 for the four packs, and then the three packs are 300 each, which is like 2,900 or 2,000 if you get the thing, or if you get the giant bundle. Um, it's also released, uh, sorry, it's also releasing on May 8th over there, which is just 10 days after Xenoblade Chronicles X launched. So, I mean, that's another curious thing, because that's almost, that's only, well, like, against kind of what Alex said, but it kind of hints at, you know, something that like Sakurai might have a problem with, too. I'm not saying that Xenoblade X Chronicles X is not a full game, but, you know, releasing it so soon after the launch, like, so soon post-launch DLC, you know, kind of does shake my faith a little bit that maybe they just couldn't get everything in that they wanted to in the original game, and that it's, this is a quick way of making up for it. It's a slippery slope, uh, definitely. They need to be careful. As long as I can buy the game... And if I choose not to buy that DLC, as long as that doesn't, like, hinder my progress, like saying, oh, you know, I would have a much easier time completing the story of the game if I had this DLC, um, 
as long as like that's not the case, like it's like a, a money trap, then it'll be all right. As long as I have that option where I can play the game and enjoy it, and I don't have to buy that DLC because I don't want it. Yeah, and I think uh, you make a good point, Alex. That that slippery slope. Like, there's so many games now. I mean, just look at the last five years where, you know, post post launch DLC has come out uh, pretty quickly, like within the first couple months, or maybe even like patches to the game. And then you know, come five six months later, it's like, oh, here's a game of the year edition. You know, we have so many game of the year editions. Oh my god! Yeah, we do. Or a, a certain bundle that comes with everything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I saw another one like uh, Shadow of Mordor, which I haven't finished playing through, is now getting a game of the year edition. It is. Uh, it's not or it is. Uh, it is, and it's like coming out uh, in May or something. And the Wait, game is coming out that yet? in November. So. Um, anyway, so and I think Dragon Dragon Age Inquisition is probably the same thing. It's just a way for them to like resell everything, or you know, people who were on the fence before. Hey, here's our game packaged with you know the patches and the stuff we've done since launch, and uh, here's the game complete now. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's like definitely uh, like like I said earlier, relying on that whole. Well, the game's out. We can still fix it. But with the magic, with the magic of the internet and everything, and easily downloading stuff, you know, well, no rush anymore. When um, I don't know, I got, I always think about like I wonder how stressful it was being a game designer. Let's say back in the cartridge days, or before you know we had um, internet connectivity with our consoles, where it was if the game is not at you know full uh, a full completion or you know to uh, to its standards upon release, we're screwed. Then we have released a, a buggy game that no one is going to play and that will always be branded upon us. Yep. Like E.T. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, can, you can't exactly, you know, like send out, uh, send out a cartridge and then go, oh, here's the secondary cartridge to, you know, make up for the uh, for that one uh, in-game bug or something. It's funny because uh, a uh, perfect example of that is uh, we were talking about this before the cast started was Donkey Kong 64. When that originally came out, it had a... Uh, a game breaking bug that would make it randomly crash. Oh, that's and right. They didn't know why it happened. They couldn't find out how to fix it. And the only way to fix it was to have the N64 expansion pack in it. So that's why the game was sold with that and required it to fix that one little bug. Because even though they lost money with every you know card they sold of that, it would still have been cheaper to do that than to have to like recall all these cards. And you know that would cost them millions. Yeah. Well, I almost forgot about that. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, moving on to the last bit of uh, DLC content that Nintendo kind of goes through. Um, it's not exact. It's not exactly uh, DLC. In fact, the D is completely gone. It's just LC. Content, just content. Uh, yeah. Like loadable, loadable content. content. <laughs> loadable content. And uh, that's everybody's. Favorite rare figurine set, Amiibos. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it's it's a phenomenon sweeping the nation. Uh, for those yes, who Alex. Know. Do you know of these Amiibos, maybe? Never heard of them. You might have maybe a shelf of them. You know, just I might. Totally yeah. great and decked out. Yes, there might I be know. a couple videos on PureNintendo.com that talk about Alex and his Amiibo experience. And there might be another one coming in the future. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Intrigue. No, really. Hmm. Funny, you're getting, dis you're getting a display for all these little tiny plastic pieces of characters when that golden icon of a console that's right behind you is not in its own display shelf. Oh, Instead, please. It just sits upon a cooler. It belongs there. <laughs> it belongs there. <laughs> it, it's in the corner. It knows what it did. Yeah. <laughs> that's my personal headache machine. <laughs> For those days when you just want a migraine, break out the Virtual Boy. And um, so the Amiibos, we haven't really seen any kind of like substantial uh, DLC offered with them. I mean, when you get it, put an Amiibo on with the game, it's usually something like an extra characters on the screen, or you get new abilities, or you know, you get like a new weapon, or you know, new items or whatever. But it's nothing like that you can't beat the game without, or like that's something like beyond like what Nintendo was offered, say with the Hyrule Warriors pack, or the uh, Mario Kart pack. You know, I can't get like 
I guess, a Shulk Amiibo or an Unlock All Four packs for Xenoblade X. It's not, it's not going to work that way. Or it's not going to work that way yet. We don't we don't know what the future holds for mm. what Nintendo's going to do with their Amiibo line. Um, well, but it definitely does seem to be like their newest way to deliver extra content. I um I like the uh, the Amiibo. I like the way they're handling it um, because hush you. <laughs> yeah, let me explain myself. I like the fact that I can buy a figure if I want. It looks cool on my shelf. Um, and But it's nothing that I need to play the game or to finish it. It's purely, like, cosmetic stuff. Like, I'll get, you know, the the racer designs for my me and Mario Kart or whatever. You know, I'll unlock some 3D character models in Xenoblade uh, Chronicles. Stuff like that. It's purely like cosmetic. It's just there for fluff or extra content if you want it. Um, it, I think it needs to stay that way. Um, At least until they can get a a handle on getting these figures out to people so there aren't shortages. Hmm. But that's that's a whole other can of worms right there. Yeah. So, so kind of what you're saying is like it, it appeals to a collector in terms of oh I've got all these awesome looking figurines and yeah there's some a bit of you know yeah you can get like a uh, a character skin or something like that but um, I, I feel like the the bigger part for me on Amiibo is definitely uh, it's a collector's thing like they look nice if you display them properly or something like that but it's kind of like what we were talking about you know, for a DLC purpose like I wouldn't purchase an Amiibo for its DLC abilities at all just because to me. I wouldn't spend that much, you know, or fight someone if, if like, some people have that much just for, um, you know, something as small as, like, a skin or something like that um, until they, like, sweeten the deal with Amiibo, like, give me more of a reason to pick it up. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I, but, I, but I still totally see why people go get them. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, I like what Alex mentioned as far as, you know, the Amiibo. It's nothing like, you know, unlocking big levels, you know, because I feel like people who don't want to buy Amiibo, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, they're like, hey, you you locked out these characters or these new levels, or, you know, what if Mario Kart levels were were locked behind that, and they weren't accessible to everyone, just just the people who found the Amiibo. Amiibo. Um, so I think they're, they're smart in the sense that they're, they're giving you a little bit, but not too much, because they know, they know the thing, the demand is high for them, and the supply is not very good. Um, they know not everyone's going to get them, and the content that they want to develop for it, uh, you know, big content needs to be accessible to everybody. What yeah. I hope they do in the future is, you know, if it is like big content packs, like let's say another DLC pack for Mario Kart, I wouldn't mind if I, instead of buying the the DLC pack on the eShop for $8, if I uh, if they had like a new amiibo that's like Mario Kart centric amiibo, like maybe it has you know Mario in a in a hover cart, you know, and that was twelve dollars or whatever the amiibo price is now, so you pay twelve dollars for that and you get the new DLC pack which has two cups and three extra characters and all that, and that way you're paying just a few extra dollars, you're getting the character, but then you're also getting that content. That way it's not restricting people only to buy that Amiibo to get the content. They're, they're still providing a way for you to do that, but if people want to get that Amiibo, you get that content too. I don't know. Well, we also have to uh, mention the fact that they're going to be coming out with the, the Amiibo cards pretty soon Yeah. Um, for that new uh, Animal Crossing game. Mm-hmm. And that's still kind of a little wishy-washy on that one, but at least it's a, it's a cheaper alternative to say like DLC so I don't have to pay you know 12 bucks a pop for a figure at least with this if I'm paying like 4.99 for a pack of so and so cards um, you know it's it's a cheaper alternative um, but again that that's getting into dangerous territory because with the Animal Crossing game it seems like you need those cards in order to fully enjoy the game you're going to be picking those cards up bud? I, to be honest I, I'm not sure about that yeah. Um, yeah. I think the the concept of the game is fun, being able to like design like a house, but I don't like the fact that I'm gonna need like skin, like a card to be able to design this person's house or like I'm not entirely sold on that yet. Alex, 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 you truly don't see the message that they're trying to give. 
They're trying to give you the true Animal Crossing experience by Tom nooking you into buying these cards. This is the gotta catch them all experience is what it is. Yeah, but it, they're totally Tom nooking you saying, oh, you want to play this game? Here, pay all this money for these cards. That's the only way you can play and have fun. Mm-hmm. Tom nooking. Totally I guess I'm literally, I'm literally about the cards because um, at least with the figures... I have something that I can display on my shelf that still looks cool. With the mm-hmm. cards, I'm worried that eventually it might be like forgotten, like mm-hmm. those uh, those Pokemon uh, Rumble U figures that I have. I have a few of those. Those are like completely like worthless. I can't use them for anything else, and they're really teeny tiny. You know, they don't they're not that cool to display. Um, whereas at least with the Amiibo, they're big enough where they look cool on a shelf and. I just fear that the cards, while it is a cheaper alternative for people to unlock that cosmetic stuff, is going to be forgotten eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I the e reader. I thought you, yeah, I thought you were going to mention e reader cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bought into that craze too. Yeah. Uh, but I Alex, definitely, uh, back in yeah. <laughs> Alex, you definitely bring up a good point in that Nintendo is really going to have to. Do something with these cards to make people want to buy them, like over the amiibos. Right now, there's no like crossover. Like, there's not. You can buy a Marth car- amiibo, or you can buy this Marth card. Like, there's nothing like that yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it definitely seems on the surface that if you had a choice between one or the other, you're gonna go with the figurine. You're not gonna go with a card because a card can easily be like you know lost, put in a corner somewhere. Like, you're not gonna show off your pack of cards to your friends. You're gonna show off your amiibo. Amiibo figures. That's what you're going to put on the stand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it might be worth it to Nintendo to, you know, purchase or, like, to either, like, increase, like, what Justin was talking about, like, increase what you can get with the Amiibo. Like, you can buy the DLC with the Amiibo, but also, you know, make sure you have that offer online. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to, it seems like there's going to be, like, a lot of, like, things you'd have to balance just to have the cards exist in the same plane as the Amiibos. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, again, it's that slippery slope, you know, like, how do you do it without making the customer feel like nickel and dime to death? Because that's how I felt when they, they announced that new Animal Crossing game. Mm-hmm. Is because we, Maybe it's because we haven't gotten enough details yet. That's what I'm thinking, like, why should I buy these cards just to, to do one tiny action within the game? Like a like to me, to me, that seems a little that like that's not worth it. That feels like nickel and diming. Like the game isn't complete. I have to buy these cards to get all the characters to design for. Um, maybe we'll know more when the game is released. But for now, I'm to me, I don't think that's the the right direction DLC with Nintendo should go. Right. Now, for now, you don't want to get Tom Nook. No, I don't want to get Tom Nook. Yeah, uh, I definitely agree. I well, I also think we we do definitely need to see much more of. And this newest Animal Crossing, was it Happy Home Decoration? Designer. Have you happy, happy Home Designer. Because, I mean, I haven't seen much of it outside of that just initial uh, Nintendo Direct announcement. And, they, yeah, they did highly emphasize the card, so I'm hoping we're going to see a little bit more and that Nintendo isn't going to go down that you know down that path of you need, ex- you need to buy these extra physical things in order to get the full experience of Animal Crossing. That's why I like about Nintendo. They don't really have to do that with games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, you have to buy a DLC. It's always more of a yeah, take it if you want. Mm-hmm. So. All right. <sighs> Sorry, yeah. I, I working hard, working hard. That, that's why I'm yawning. I swear. <laughs> and um, I'm just gonna move on I mean, to. If there's our... something you want to tell us, man. I mean that if our our opinions are absolutely boring to you, I mean just be a man. Just go and say it. Of course not. I value everybody's input, and you all make me so very entertained. Even mine? Anyway, here's the uh, reader questions that we've got going on right here. <laughs> Sweet. Sounds like someone's avoiding the question there. Like somebody's <laughs> got a comment. I think that's what you're trying to say. Mm. And uh, this one comes from our, a user called uh, Sunny Leafs, um, and they write, Speaking of DLC... What does everyone think of the 200cc in Mario Kart 8? To be honest, I'm not a big fan. The tracks weren't designed around that much speed, so it feels kind of broken. You often have to play conservatively, 
by skipping boost just to stay on course. It's fun, but I prefer 150cc. I'm I'm kind of halfway with that one because I was playing some of it and I did Baby Park, which if you all know, it's, it's just noble. That's all yeah. it is. The one mm -hmm. thing I love about doing that card because uh, I don't know if you guys ever did this, but me and my brother always had a uh, a little contest. Like he would, I beat my record by one second, so I would do it and beat his by one second, and then we just keep doing that. But on 200 cc, the second you make a turn, you immediately have to like hold down the brakes just to get ready for the next turn. It's a little bit. I, I can definitely see where where it does feel like it's a little bit broken, but in a sense, it kind of adds a bit more to the um, to the gameplay of okay, so now it's actually it can actually be detrimental when when it comes to actually hitting a boost pad. So sometimes you have to, you know, watch out for them. They're, it kind of like you know mixes things up a bit. Kind of like when you went to zero G mode, how it actually was a good thing if you bumped into another uh, racer so you could spin around and get a boost. Kind of you know mixes things up a little, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It changes the gameplay quite a bit because you have to be more strategic. Uh, I was playing on uh, Neo Bowser City on 200 CC. My goodness, what a what a mess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like, there's so many, like, hairpin turns in that level, mm -hmm. and, like, th there's one where it's, like, a hairpin, but it's more like a paperclip, you know? <laughs> and then, like, a paperclip uh, to the left, and then it goes into, like... It seemed more like a staple to me. Yeah, th there's another one that's more, like, alien head-like, like this. And, oh, that was just nuts. Kind of like. Are you getting, like, Rorschach paintings when you see these tracks? So what does this track look like to you? Describe it a word how this makes you feel. Yeah. Anger. Yes, Rainbow Road. It does that to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's, it definitely feels, I don't, know, I don't know if broken is the right word, but um, it definitely... It's more, it turns into a more technical race, kind of like the way the F-Zero games are. Those games are all about like proper like break and drifting techniques and oh, yeah. Mario Kart in general is usually more accessible. Yeah. Um, so I can see how like it would be frustrating and and uh, it would feel broken that way. Uh, I think if you if you practice with it, you'll get you'll get better at it. Absolutely, I think so too. And it's funny you mentioned F Zero because hmm, F Zero like elements, two F Zero tracks and one F Zero kart. Hmm, Nintendo, what are you planning? Obviously, another Star Fox game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. I, I just want to see our moves. Hoping for a Star Fox track on this one, like a Star Fox themed racetrack or something like that. Yeah, that can you imagine like, an asteroid belt uh, Mario Kart track? How yeah, cool that would be. That would be pretty awesome. I hope Nintendo's listening. Yeah. What are we talking about? I'm sure they always tune into us. Of course. What, what if the tracks in, in a future Mario Kart were destructible or, like, augmented? Like, you know, there could be, like, meteors or something that comes down, like, smashes one area, and then one area opens up for you to go around. That would be cool. Hmm. Hmm. What, what if uh, they added a new feature in, Mar in the next Mario Kart where you could actually slap the, uh, the person that sent that blue shell at you? you? You can actually hit a button, and it pops them in the head. <laughs> no, those are the people you need to watch out for. The people you need to watch out for now are those ones that have the little air horn, and they just stop oh. at the finish line with the last lap just to just to take you down. Oh yeah. Just to let your defeat sting that much more. I, I think still the worst wipeout for Mario Kart. My least favorite. About to cross the track, red shell. I flop over and I'm like, man, my character's playing around, and then everyone just zooms right by me. I'm in seventh place. I was in first. Now I'm in seventh. What the hell? <laughs> Soul crushing. I don't want to play this anymore. Yeah, I had a pretty soul crushing uh, experience in 200 CC <laughs> last night on Neo Bowser City. I was I was drifting around that last turn before you go up that uh, uh, jump boost to the finish line. Uh huh. And I was in third place. The first and second guys were were right there. I could see them. Um, and a blue shell goes by me. Right. Yeah, and and so like for a moment I'm thinking, hey, I'm the luckiest person ever. The blue shell just missed me, and then it hit, hits the guy in first, right? But he's he's just far enough ahead where it it blows up and it doesn't doesn't affect my path at all. Uh -huh. Problem is that guy in second uh, apparently got like a green shell uh, at the last uh, thing. Shoots it backwards, right? Right as we're like drifting around. Oh, the no. we end up like in six or seven. But I was just like, ah. Oh no! But like you know, what could have been like an awesome opportunity, like just drifting around there, could probably pass the guy in second. 
Uh, Blue Shell misses me. It's not to be. That's why, to me, there's really no skill in Mario Kart, because <laughs> even the most skillful ra- racer, they're, it can all it can all go go to crap, and uh, all it takes is one shell, or one banana peel. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Double Dash was my uh, soul crushing game. I don't know why of all the Mario Karts, I found that one the most difficult. It's oh, also yeah? the one I love the most, but like, man, I feel I like once I'm done, my butt's been kicked. Hmm. I still think Super Mario Kart's the most difficult of them all. You try learning how to drift on that one, it's my god. Yeah, and you have to know how to drift in. That one. Yeah. You can't you can't get away with like the nonsense that you got away with any of the other titles. You just have to do it. Get, even it's not even like <clears throat> after the first course you could maybe get away with not drifting, but in the second cup you have to know how to drift. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another slow crushing one for me too. The first time I played that with uh, my friend, never played it before, and you know he was an expert at it. So he's like, "Oh, let's do battle mode." It's like, "Okay, that sounds like fun." He gets the the feather power up. It uses the jump over uh, the boundaries, and then just sits there and picks me off with shells. And there's nothing I can do. Oh, I can't. I have to laugh because me and my brother did that to each other all the time. Is or, like, I remember you doing this. I can't, jump I can't defend out, myself. Hopping and see how far we could get. Like, mm-hmm. try to find the, the the like the pit or like the never ending wall. You, you know what they need to do. Um, I, I saw someone posted like a thread on on NeoGAF uh, a week or so ago. Now, now the the Animal Crossing DLC pack is out. People are like, you know, what do they do with Mario Kart now? You know, what what could they improve with it? And while definitely they've added a lot of improvements since it, it launched and a lot of cool content, um, the battle mode is still something that they could easily. Yeah. Um, with arenas. And well, I, I mean, think about like some of the arenas that they have. They're pretty. They're pretty two dimensional. You know, you have you have this new gameplay element of going upside down or going on walls and all of this stuff. And for the most part, there, there's like maybe one or two of those eight levels in battle mode that actually let you do that. Um, I mean, like, think about like maybe like you're inside like a cube or something, and you're you know. Like some, yeah, some new, cool. new block city that's you know these you know the inside of a Dyson sphere or something I don't know. We need a reimagined uh, block fort from the Nintendo sixty four. Oh yes, because well, that was the most perfect. Awesome. That or skyscraper. Skyscraper was my jam. Yeah, skyscraper was oh. cool too. I mean, just like all the ricochets the shells could have, and, and mm-hmm. it was just... dude, so much chaos. I loved it. So. I, to me, like, the battle mode, if they did, like, a DLC pack, just, just battle mode, like, later this year, that would that would make Mario Kart 8 pretty, pretty high up on all-time Mario Kart. At that point, so. Totally agree with that. Hmm. Nintendo, you need to get on it. Yep. Battle mode DLC pack is next. Come on. <laughs> All right. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's KoopaCast. And so I want to thank our, our reader, Sunny Lees, for writing in. If you have a question that you would like to submit to our podcast, you can always leave a comment in any of our podcast posts that we post. So say in two weeks, we come back with KoopaCast number 67. You say, hey, I want to make a comment about this. I want them to talk about this. Well, just write it below. We'll see. We'll do our best at the end of every show to answer your questions. If you have another question and you can't reach this site for whatever reason, you can always tweet us, uh, our Pure Nintendo accounts, at Pure Nintendo using the hashtag KoopaCast. I've got my tablet right here, and I'm always keeping an eye on Twitter during every podcast to see any questions who come up. So don't worry, we won't snub anybody. <clears throat> so, you know, don't be shy, step right up. And now I'd like to thank Tristan, Justin, and Alex for joining me for another KoopaCast. Thank you all. Always a pleasure. Always fun. And of course, I would like to thank our readers for again and our listeners for reading our magazine and listening to our podcast and listening to us drone on about Nintendo subjects. And Xenoblade. And Xenoblade. It's become the new Super Metroid. <laughs> and Pretty so, much. and without further ado, we will see you all in two weeks with another Koopa Cast. Take care, care, folks. Take care, everyone. Where's my banner? <laughs>